We've got the refreshed Toyota Highlander gone is the V6. This or the Grande Highlander? Follow that blue Highlander. Yeah. What's the chances? <laughs> Ooh. Nice torque. That's the new one. We'll get into what's wow. under the hood in a second. Andrea, I think I should do the whole review in a Scottish <laughs> accent for the Highlander. Please If don't. you're really Scottish, you say Highlander. No, let's not. All right. What's under the hood of this new thing? A 2.4 liter turbocharged four cylinder with an eight speed automatic transmission, 264 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque, standard all wheel drive in Canada, front wheel drive and all wheel drive options are available in the US on every trim. The tank of fuel will go a little further with this 2023 model, 692 kilometers or 430 miles compared to the old V6 at 663 kilometers and 412 miles. So spoiler alert, this new engine's great. <laughs> All right. Help me. <laughs> Let's get into it. What do you get with this Highlander? What are the key standard features? The Highlander comes with an 8-inch touchscreen, a 7-inch multi-information display, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a 6-speaker audio system, 8-way power driver seat, 4-way manual passenger seat, heated front seats, fabric upholstery, 8-passenger seating, 3-zone independent automatic climate control, and Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus. In the U.S., heated front seats are not standard. We've got drive modes, sport's always fun, but what else mm -hmm. can we put it in? Gotta put it in S for subscribe, and if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop, and then you can watch them. And we do this twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, and please follow along on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to see what's up behind the scenes. And for me, it's motormouth underscore auto, and the links are below the like button. So if you're considering this new 2023 model, you picked a good year because yeah. they did some major updates for this model. Well, one being the engine, of course. Gone is the V6, in is a new turbo four cylinder. Limited and platinum models have power folding exterior mirrors, which I really appreciate. There is a 12.3 inch digital driver display and a 12.3 inch touchscreen that limited and platinum models get. Now Toyota has moved to a standard seven inch driver display. There's a new location for the wireless charger. It's now on a nice shelf just under the climate control and wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. They don't mess around at no. Toyota. That's great. <laughs> you know what's interesting is that the big screen that we have on this top model, the yeah. posh one, is now available as Andrea mentioned on the Limited, which was a kind of a, a thorn in our side when we yeah. first reviewed this several years ago, but uh, the updates are certainly welcome. All right, this has got the new 2.4 liter turbo. We drove it in the Grand Highlander. I was super impressed. This one, I'm loving it. Yeah. I think that Toyota has done a really great job calibrating this. The eight speed automatic transmission is impressive. It shifts smoothly. It's quick shifting, which is exactly what you want. And this is the basis for many, many different products. So yeah. anything that had a V6 before is now going to have this. Think of the Camry, right? Yeah. That When the new one gets updated, it's going to have this engine and they use it for all the hybrid attachments they put on it for bigger vehicles, right? Yeah. Like think of the Tacoma. Like the Tacoma has this engine as its base engine. So if it's competent enough for a pickup truck, it would be just fine for this. Yeah. Andrew is right. The calibration is great. It keeps the engine in the meaty rev range yeah. for torque. So you get more torque out of this engine. It's more satisfying to drive. So this has less horsepower than the V6, but more torque, 47 pound feet. I'm going to gun it on the highway. Yeah. This thing just goes. When you smooth. hit the pedal, it flies. It's super smooth. I can't believe it. I said to Zach, I can't believe the torque. There is never a lack of power when passing on the highway. Right. And sometimes with a turbocharged four, you do feel that and the cabin gets louder. That's not the case with this. Okay, just put your head around this for a moment. The Audi Q7, that's a premium brand, yeah. has a two liter four cylinder turbo as its base engine. Like a GLE Mercedes Benz, mid-sized luxury SUV has a yeah. two liter four cylinder turbo. So this is a larger displacement at 2.4, so that's already bigger. 
and I think it just does a wonderful job. They did a great job calibrating this. And some of you are saying, oh, but what about reliability? I will put my money on Toyota any day when it comes to reliability. Zach and I were saying like Toyota kind of sat on the sidelines oh, yeah. and you have all these German brands who've been using turbocharged four cylinder engines for a long time. 20 years. Come on, they've learned something along the way and they've done a really nice job with this. Andrea, everybody always comments on how you choose your outfit to match mm. the vehicle. Did you know Notice that I wore my blueprint shirt to match the blueprint exterior. <laughs> I did, looking fabulous. You know what? Guy. It's just a coincidence. But what about me? I mean, I've got the interior color combo too. Exterior, interior. Of course, you had to outdo it, Andrea. <laughs> uh, the one thing I'll say about the outside of this thing, I think this is one of the better looking. Toyota products and one of the yeah. better looking three row SUVs. This week we have the CX-90 from Mazda parked mm -hmm. alongside this one. This is better looking. I think the back end on this is better looking than the CX-90 for sure. I think that's a big complaint about the CX-90 is the rear. I'm still enjoying the Grand Highlander exterior mm -hmm. design more than this, yep. but this looks quite elegant. It's elegant, just like you, Andrea. Mm -hmm back in the good books. All right, Andrea, what do you get on the outside of this? So this gets eight inches of ground clearance. It comes standard with LED headlights available, premium LED headlights and LED fog lights, which you're seeing on our test model. Standard 18 inch wheels, available 20 inch wheels. If you want a sportier look, go with the XSE trim. You've got black exterior accents, a sport grille, sport front and rear bumpers, 20 inch black wheels, and also it comes with a sport tune suspension. Our Platinum model has Platinum exterior accents and Platinum 20 inch wheels. All right, then we turn our attention to the inside. We already talked about the fact that this screen is now available on the Limited yeah. and above, which is a nice feature. I like the fact that they kept the shelves that they had in the old Highlander. Mm. It's not as big, yeah. but that um, cell phone placement just under the head unit and the HVAC system is brilliant for your phone. This is really well designed. Yeah, well organized in here. Plenty of storage, whether it's in the door pockets, the center console as well. I like the fact that there's knobs and buttons in here. One thing you'll notice is that the volume knob is quite far it's, off, but this is what I thought, Zach. It's for me. Yes, and guess what? I've just been using the volume on the steering wheel. Works perfectly All right, fine. I disagree with it being over by the passenger. Yeah. As much as there's controls on the steering wheel, I still, because I'm right-handed, yeah. use the knob on the car right there because it should be right there. You know how you saw this, Andrea? How? You put it in the center console, kind of the way Mazda does. Yeah. Audi had it for years. That really solves a lot of problems. I'm left-handed. So I mean, this is this, really far away. Yeah, from you. this is right at my fingertips on the steering wheel, and I kind of just got used to it. I want to talk a little bit about passenger configuration. When people are looking at a three-row SUV, they want to know which trims get a bench seat, which trims Andrea, get captain's chairs. Which trims get a bench seat and which trims get captain's chairs? So in Canada, the base trims get a bench seat, and the top three trims, XSE, Limited, and Platinum all come with captain's chairs. In the Why US, did they do that to us, Andrea? Why? I know, I know. Okay. We need more. In the US, there is more flexibility. The two base models come with a bench seat, but the XLE and limited trims have the bench seat or captain's chairs being offered. Yay! Platinum trim in the US is the same as in Canada. You get captain's chairs. So at the beginning, we do all our key standard features, and for most Toyotas, the XLE trim yeah. is kind of the best value. Is that the case here? It really is. That's where you're going to be opened up to more features, like a moonroof, the heated steering wheel, driver seat lumbar support, a power passenger seat, soft tech seats, wireless charger, a power rear door. That's where you get blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. The limited model adds the larger 12.3 inch screens, 11 speaker JBL sound system, leather upholstery, driver seat memory, ventilated front seats, panoramic sunroof and a power rear door with kick sensor. The top trim gets you the bird's eye view camera, a digital rear view mirror and heated second row seats. In the United States, the XLE trim adds the moonroof, heated front seats, a wireless charger and the larger touchscreen is available on this trim. 
The Limited model has the same features as the Canadian Limited trim with a few exceptions. The bird's eye view monitor is an available feature on the Limited trim and the panoramic sunroof is only available on the Platinum model. So here's me getting in the second row. I have to say, this is very comfortable. Of course, the seats slide fore and aft. There's plenty of legroom. There's good headroom. And of course, those captain's chairs recline. One thing to note, the cup holders between the two seats is not removable. Comparing the Highlander to the Honda Pilot and the new Mazda CX-90, the Highlander offers more front row legroom at 42 inches. Second row legroom at 38.7 inches falls short to these competitors. Then you slide the second row forward and climb on into the third row. The bottom of the seats are really quite scooped out, so your bum sits low and your knees sit high. There's not a lot of room in here. This is just for kids. Third row legroom at 27.7 inches is small. Both the CX-90 and Pilot offer more. And then you lift the cargo area at the back, same thing. The area behind the third row isn't that big, but the good news is there's extra storage under the floor. Cargo space behind the third row in the Highlander is 16 cubic feet, which is more than the CX-90, but less than the Pilot. Overall, cargo space at 84.3 cubic feet is once again more than the CX-90, but less than the Honda. You have more questions about this compared to the Grand Islander. <laughs> now I sound like a sailor. All right, let's get into it. These accents. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Since they already have a spacious RAV4, do you think they will discontinue the Highlander in favor of the Grand Highlander? Space-wise, it doesn't compete with the Pilot or the Korean Twins anymore. I think they're going to continue making this and the Grand Highlander. You just think about how many categories that Toyota fills. Yeah. Like more than any other brand. And they don't seem to ever get rid of a car. No. The CHR had to go. Mm -hmm. um, they keep adding them. Yeah, they've got a huge portfolio. And if we talk about electrification from hybrids to plug-in hybrids and, of course, these gas models... Um, you're right. The Pilot, especially the new one that just came out, is big. And the Telluride is also large. Third row legroom. But they have room, the Grand Highlander. Yes, well, I was going to say third row legroom compared to the Highlander. Yeah, this is one of the smaller vehicles for third row legroom. And cargo capacity has more, believe it or not, cargo space behind the third row than the Mazda CX-90. Well, that's not hard. However, if you want something bigger, get the Grand Highlander. They have provided another option. Will they get rid of it? I don't think so. I actually spoke to Toyota about that, and they said the difference in price between the Highlander and the Grand Highlander is substantial enough that people will continue to choose the Highlander. They just don't want such a large vehicle in the Grand Highlander. Yeah, and then where are you going to park it, right? You might have a small garage. You might have an underground parking spot in a yeah. condo complex or something. So, yeah, I think there's there's a, is a case for both keeping and getting rid of it. I suggest they're probably going to keep both. I think so, too. Both this and the Grand Highlander needs a plug-in hybrid. Would be nice if it is the V6 PHEV from Lexus, maybe the Grand Highlander. Well, the good news is that the new Lexus TX is going to be available with a plug-in hybrid. So I think the Grand Highlander may get it one day. Probably will. Uh, they said uh, stay tuned. They didn't give us all the information on it. No. Like exactly what the layout is. But the fact that it's in that packaging could easily be put into the Toyota. I mean, makes makes perfect sense. Absolutely. So I'm in search of a midsize SUV. Been looking at the Lexus NX, RX, Sorento, and been thinking of the Highlander too. Luxury, comfort, features are important for a family of four. Okay, so I was walking the dog yesterday and mm -hmm. I ran into Dr. Phil. Not that Dr. Phil. It's just no. the neighbor of ours who's a retired doctor named Phil. And he wants to get a Highlander. He went to the Toyota store and they said, we don't even take orders. Oh, you boy. You can't get one. So it's just a long wait, even for the gas model? Or was he He's, looking at the hybrid? He was looking at the hybrid. But oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Would, I would suggest it's probably a bit of a wait for anything. So the NX and the RX offer a little bit more luxury for sure. Uh, but they're smaller than the Highlander and they are not three row options. Sounds like maybe you don't need a three row because it's a family of four. But if you need a third row in a pinch, I think that this Highlander is a great option. The Sorento has plenty of powertrain options from gas to hybrid to plug-in hybrid. Turbo, turbo, get the turbo. 
but the plug-in hybrid is only a six passenger vehicle which may work for you for a family of four all great options you've got to drive them because they all drive differently this one surprised me i'm really liking it and now it's time for our hot topic what's this one andrea i just wonder if the new powertrain will be strong enough for all that weight okay does it have enough power andrea for sure yeah you are not going to miss the power here's You're the not. thing here's the thing they have a hybrid version of this so this is a 2.4 liter turbo yeah. and the hybrid is a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated gas model of course it has the hybrid system in it but i'll take the turbo over the hybrid to get the most power so i don't think power is an issue no with the extra torque that this provides compared to the v6 you're not going to miss it you know, I know that there are a lot of complaints. I mentioned this before, but you've got to try this. I think that you will be really impressed with it, just like we are. As we said at the beginning, it is calibrated very well. Yeah, they did a really, really good yeah. job. I don't think we need to say more, Andrea. No. Hot topic done. All right, now we move on to what do you get with this? Can this new engine tow? What's it rated at? And more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The base model starts at just over $48,500 in Canada, and the top platinum trim is just under $59,000. In the U.S., the base all-wheel drive model starts at just over $38,000, and the top platinum all-wheel drive model is just under $51,500. Here's the fuel economy for this new turbo engine. 11 liters per 100 kilometers in the city, 8.4 on the highway. That's 21 miles per gallon city, 28 miles per gallon highway. This Highlander can tow 5,000 pounds and the warranty is three years, 60,000 kilometers, 36,000 miles. So you like the idea of a mid-sized three row SUV. What else can you buy? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Mazda CX-90 with a 3.3 liter inline six turbo, 280 horsepower and a starting price just over $48,000. The Kia Telluride with a 3.8 liter V6, 291 horsepower and a starting price just under $53,000. The Honda Pilot with a 3.5 liter V6, 285 horsepower and a starting price just under $53,000. The Ford Explorer with the 2.3 liter EcoBoost turbocharged four cylinder, 300 horsepower, and a starting price of just over $48,000. So there are four three-row SUVs for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I really like this new powertrain. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> How do I go on from here? Um, what I, just what, jump out, Andrea. That's what, a, what, save yourself. <laughs> what I'd like to see is what the U.S. has done more flexibility with bench seats and captain's chairs on more trims. This big screen, even though it's now unlimited, should be available on lower trims too. If you're looking for a comfortable family hauler, this one is gonna to be tough to beat. I don't think you'll miss the V6. 